Welcome to my last video of 2024, my holiday special. In this video, I have to show you some cool math, of course, and I've got some beautiful holiday-themed fractals to show you and show a little bit about the math, about how I make them. I've got a challenge for all of you. I've got a little end-of-year message for all of you. But it wouldn't be a Christmas video if we didn't unbox some presents. And so this is Curiosity Box, which is the sponsor of today's video. Thank you very much to Curiosity Box. And I kind of feel like an official STEM YouTuber opening my first Curiosity Box. I have never worked with them before, but I am very excited because these boxes are full of all kinds of fun goodies. Okay, what do we got? First up, it looks like we have a t-shirt. They even got my size. This is gonna be good. Okay, very nice. It looks like we've got our Bohr model. This is apparently radium, so Bohr definitely won a Nobel for his model of atoms. But then Marie Curie also won a Nobel for uh, the discovery of radium. So uh, that's pretty cool. Looks like we've got a bunch of cool wire puzzles. Uh, don't tell them, but I think I'm gonna put this in my seven-year-old stocking. Okay, next up we get a book. Ah, Edward Page Mitchell. This is uh, sort of one of the original science fiction writers. A whole bunch of stories about this. I've heard about this book. I have never got to read it, so I'm definitely excited to put that one on the bookshelf. Bunch of uh, stickers that go along with it. Okay, so this one's kind of cool. I think I'm gonna have to edit this in. Uh, I was reading online, it's, it's a chocolate mold, but it's not just any old chocolate mold. Apparently, there's a diffraction grating inside of all of these that's gonna make our chocolates have really cool rainbow reflections. Maybe we'll check that out later. And then the real hero, it's the Schmoyer sundial. I'm definitely gonna be excited about this one. What makes this particular sundial pretty special is that it actually tells you accurate clock time as opposed to solar time. And there we are. It, it's actually really stormy outside right now in the middle of winter up here in Canada, but I'm excited to try this out for sure. So this has been Curiosity Box. You can get 25% off an order of Curiosity Box using the code Trevor, that's me. Yes, it's T-R-E-F-O-R because of weird Welsh spellings. But the link is down in the description, so click the link, use the code TREVOR to get 25% off your order. I think this makes a great Christmas gift for any STEM enthusiast in your life, and they've got subscription boxes that go throughout the year, so definitely check out Curiosity Box, and my thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. With that said and done, let's do some math. What my goal was is to create a little holiday seasoned e-card kind of thing for all of you. And so I was trying to think, how should I do it? And, and I know that some of my favorite math for artwork is all about fractals. I think my favorite fractal tree is the Pythagorean tree. So, okay, so it works like this. You start with a square, and then you attach a second square above it, a little bit of an angle, and via Pythagoras, you have to put a third smaller square in to complete the picture. So this gives you a, a right triangle, that's why it's called the Pythagorean fractal. But then, for each of those squares, you keep on doing the same thing. And as you add more and more squares, it creates this beautiful tree. You can actually manipulate the angle that all the squares are making, and you get slightly different shaped trees as you change that angle. Okay, and then I need some snowflakes. Uh, there's a couple of snowflakes that I like to make. In this one, you start with a hexagon. You then take that hexagon and you replace it with six smaller hexagons and it's a fractal, we're gonna keep on going. In every one of those smaller hexagons, you replace it with six smaller hexagons, you keep going, you get a lovely snowflake. You can do the same for different size polygons, like here's pentagons, this is gonna create a pentaflake. You can do it for whatever you like, like triangles create something called the Sierpinski gasket. Okay, it doesn't really look like a snowflake too much, but, but actually I have a, a fond memory of the Sierpinski gasket. My first actual like math research, like working with a professor to do some genuine math research, actually involve the Sierpinski gasket. So I have some, uh, some very fond memories of this one. By the way, this video has a bit of a meta purpose, which is that what I've actually been doing over the last week or two is finally learning Manum. And for those who don't know, Manum is the sort of math animation library that was originally created by 3Blue1Brown for all of his amazing videos, but it's now supported with a community edition that anybody can use. And I would definitely encourage and challenge all of you to try to learn it as well if you want a, a fun project to do over the break, by the way, that's probably it. Uh, by the way, I will mention if someone comes up with a really pretty animation and you email it to me at the email down in the description, then I'll choose the prettiest one and put it into the end of a random video sometime in 2025. 
So that's my challenge if you want a fun project over the break. But for me, I've just been learning, I've been having a lot of fun. I'm a noob at Python. Almost all of my animations in the past on this channel have come from MATLAB. Like a couple years ago, I did this one on the Coke Snowflake, which is really cool, or the Anti Snowflake. But Manum is definitely a lot easier to do some really pretty stuff. Take this animation where it starts with a hexagon and it splits it into six smaller ones. That is just one line of code. The transformation that does that is just self.play and I transform the old hexaflake, that's the name for this thing that I'm calling this, make these cool hexagons, into the new one. So I've been having so much fun with Manum. Okay, okay, back to our video. So I think I finally have the tools to put together for my e-card, so here is my final holiday message. Thank you to everybody who's been supporting this channel over this last year and the years before that. I appreciate it so much. If you celebrate Christmas, have a Merry Christmas. But regardless, I hope over the next couple weeks you have some time to relax. Maybe some time to do a little bit of math because that's always fun to do over the holidays. But regardless, we're going to be doing some more math in the new year. See you in 2025.